Hi, I'm Paul Seal from CodeShare.co.uk. Welcome to this 13th episode in this series where I'll show you how to build a website with Umbraco 10. In this episode, what I want to do is show you how to build a carousel, a bootstrap carousel using the block list editor. Um, and if you want to pick up from, let's say you've not been following all the way along and you just want to get to the code, um, I've been tagging all of the code for at the end of every episode since episode three. So you can take at the end of episode 12, you can download the source code or you can clone, fork the repository and clone it locally and do all of that if you want. But if you don't want to use Git and everything, you can just download the code at this point and then use Usync Complete to get all of this stuff. There's videos in the series where I show you how to restore it all to get to the point of whatever code you've downloaded. So go back to one of those if you're not sure how to do that. Anyway, let's get on with this. So we're going to implement a carousel and we're going to do the carousel with the captions. And while we're at it, we'll see if we can add some settings as well. So let's get on with this then. So um, we've got our Umbraco site. We're going into settings. We are going to create ourselves in elements content blocks, content models. So a bit like what we've got with the image link item where we've got title, description, image, link, etc. cetera. Um, we're, we're going to have a carousel item. We're going to create, click on the dots, create an element type and call it carousel item. And on here, we'll just choose the blue color and we'll just have a look for slide. That will do slideshow and we're going to have on this so let's just have a look see what information we're going to need so we're going to need an image uh, this is the oh, what is this this is a label and then because this is all within the caption mm, a label and then a description maybe so we've got an image, a label, it could be a title and description. Let's keep it like that and use all the different ones that we've already got. So we we'll click on composition, we'll click on title, description and the image. Is that everything that we need? Looks like that would be. Uh, for now, that's what we'll use. So submit that, save, reload the page because for some reason, yeah, it's there. Title, description and image. Uh, they're going to be optional. We'll see how it goes. The image, probably not optional, but it's just a, a demo. You can change all of this to make it real world. So that's our carousel item. And from that carousel item, we need to create ourselves a data type. And you see how we have the image links. And then when we clicked on that, we've got the label. I'm going to copy this, close that. And I'm going to create ourselves a data type and call it uh, block list and then we'll call this carousel items the property editor we want to use a block list that one there the available blocks we're going to have a look for a carousel item wrong one it's in the elements content blocks content models Carousel item, click on that. I'm going to paste in the label and I'm just going to do um, slide. I'm just going to call it slide and then we'll have one or two or whatever. So just like slide one, slide two. It's a carousel, that will do. I'm going to go back and create a settings model. So I'm going to submit this and save. Then in my setting models, I'm going to create one. So element type, carousel item settings we know we're going to create this with a setting icon and we'll have for now we'll just have a, we'll get it to use the visibility we won't do a text align but we will add some settings to this one so we've got carousel item settings and we've got carousel item so now in our data list for the carousel items we can just go in there and make sure that this uses the carousel item settings content blocks setting models carousel item settings submit 
and save right so that's our carousel items so now we want a carousel row and on our carousel do we want to have anything above it let's have a look um there's no title or description above it or anything so it's just simply um, going to just have those carousel items on it so we're going to create ourselves on content models an element type carousel row and on this we're just going to have a content tab and the properties is carousel items or slides no uh slides carousel items oh that'll do add the carousel item add the items for this carousel lovely jubbly and then we'll just do carousel tab to that enter submit that savey save right so we've got a carousel items oh i didn't choose the logo so we're just going to oh we've got a carousel row yeah so we'll just do like a cycle oh, there's a, i'm sure there's one that looks like it's going around that one just change that to blue there we are carousel row lovely we've got ourselves a carousel row we've got ourselves a carousel items and then we want to do carousel row settings. So another element type, carousel row settings. And then we click on this and we'll change it to blue and we'll just do settings. So yeah, yada, yada, same. And then we'll just do uh, visibility, block visibility settings, submit and save, job done. Right, so now we want to create add this to our list so it doesn't have a title so when we add it the label is going to be a bit different so we'll just add this here we're going to choose the content block or oh, not composition elements content blocks content models carousel row and then in here we'll just do um carousel and then plus um, we'll add string around that plus dollar index there we are and then we're going to just say if settings dot hide equals one then we want to say it's hidden Otherwise, we want to say nothing. That should do. And then we want to pick the carousel row settings, content blocks, setting models, carousel row settings. And then we'll submit that and save. So now we've added the carousel row. So we can go to our content. We can click on about where we've been adding all of these rows. And then we want to choose carousel row, carousel items, and then we can just say for each of these items. So slide one, slide one, description, image, let's pick the dog, create, and then we can do slide two. Slide two, description. Choose the image of the frog. Create, save and publish. Now one thing we can do with that as well, we can just go back and on the data type for carousel items, we can just make that inline editing, save that. And then when we go back, when we are editing the carousel, we can just edit them in here like this. A bit like when how the way you do with nested content. So we can come back out of that. We can drag this to the top, save and publish this. Um, you see how that's got slide one, slide two. Oh, we, if we wanted to, oh no, that is that is that. Um, blah blah. Yeah, that's pulling it through. That's cool. Discard. Right now, we, what we need to do is we need to go to the front page, uh, to the front end of the site. We're going to see that it's an error. Is it? No, because we didn't build the models. <laughs> 
So we go discard the changes. We don't want those. Uh, we we'll go to settings, settings, models builder, generate models. Now, as I run .NET Watch Run, it should start rebuilding the models for us. Come on. .NET Watch started, acquired main DOM. Here we go. Reload the page. Now, does it have a problem? I would have thought it would have a problem, but we'll see. Yeah, it's got a problem. It doesn't know about carousel row, so we know exactly what to call our partial view. So we'll do it this time in, I'm doing it in uh, VS Code. So I'm just going to copy, the one I want to copy is the accordion row. And that's just because we've got some, uh, like the accordion ID and things like that, that we'll probably just re rename to be carousel ID and what have you. So I'm going to copy the row. I'm going to paste it in here. I'm going to rename this to whatever it said it should be. So that's carousel row. I'm going to rename that. I'm just pressing F2 there to quickly rename. And then in this carousel row, I need to, I can just uh, replace that in here. So carousel row. And then carousel row settings. So if it's, if it's set to hide, then return nothing. Also, if carousel items is null or carousel items isn't, hasn't got any, then this where it says accordion ID, we'll call this carousel ID. And that, that's just so that we um, can have more than one carousel and it will work. So that's cool. We're going to delete this header. We won't use that. And then the ID. It, in here we'll, we'll when we get the code from bootstrap we'll do that and then row item and then i think we do another id here yeah heading id and collapse id but we'll just keep what i'm going to do is just keep a copy of this just comment it out here so we just use slash slash to comment and i'm going to take all of this away that we copied from the last one save that so that we're left with this the next thing what I want to do is um, right so I've done that so now what we need to do is actually get the code so we're going to implement this one so we're going to copy this you go to getbootstrap.com forward slash docs forward slash 5.1 and then it will get you to this <clears throat> so I'm going to copy I've copied that I'm going to paste that in there so that's the first step. So we have that. So now we've got div ID carousel example captions. So we know we can use carousel ID in here. And we can just do at and then put the ID. Class is carousel slide data BS ride carousel. So that's all the bootstrap attributes that it needed there. Carousel indicators. So this has got indicators. And what we might want to do is just turn indicators on or off depending on a setting. So we'll come back and we'll do that. So we're just going to uh, leave those on for now. But what we do need to do is we need to just uh, app for each bar item in row.carousel items or we could do a count actually. Let's do a count. Oh, I don't like this. Visual Studio Code, go away. Var item count equals row dot carousel items dot count. So it says it's got that as a property. So that's fine. And I'm going to change that. Instead of it being a for each, it'll be a for loop. So I'll do for var i equals the other and then this is a for loop in c sharp and then i is less than item count and then i plus plus so create a loop that goes through and from zero to up to that number till it's less than that number and then what we're going to do is this so we'll need an at sign around it because it's going to come inside some html 
The HTML it's going to be inside is the indicators. So I'm going to cut that, paste that in there, wrap this around the individual items, grab one of the items and move it up. So we'll delete the other two items. We can format this a bit better, I think. There we are. So we've got each one. So we have a button type as button. The BS target is carousel example captions. So let's just have a look where that came from. Carousel example captions. That's the ID. So the target is the carousel ID. So we'll just change that to be at. Uh, so after the hash, we'll do at carousel ID. So beta, uh, data BS slide two. So that is going to be the value of i so that's like we can change that to something meaningful so slide index there we are so instead of i we can change that to a meaningful variable name and then we can use that here so at slide index class active so if it's the first one we want it to be active anyway so that's the only one on this example code here that's actually got active set and area current is also set to true on the first one. So what we want to do is um, var is first equals slide index equals zero. So that means that it's the first one. So if it is the first one, then what we can do is we can add class of active. So oh, go away. So uh, is is first. What did I call it? Yeah, it's first question mark active. Otherwise, no. Don't need to add a class to that. And then this area current equals true. Again, we can do that so at is first. Now that might work, might not work. It's fine, we can take it off if we need to. And then the area label, this is the, so what does this do? So this matches, so that says slide one. All oh, right, okay, so this is just telling the person who uses a screen reader just the which slide you're on. So we'll just uh, leave slide in there and we'll just do at, and then we'll do, um, slide index plus one inside brackets so that that can happen in there because we're starting from zero that's why i've done plus one so that is going to put the indicators on for us so that's nice um, we can just move that out a bit slightly so that's our indicators what else do we have we've got our carousel inner This is bothering me, so I'm just going to fix the formatting. Oh, it looks like that's the issue with the formatting. Right, fix the formatting, just move that out a bit more. Oh no, they're okay at that level, but they're inside an outer div there. Oh, okay. So now we want to. Um, on each of these carousel items. We need to put the carousel in it, in it basically, and then we've got the buttons as well. So this is, a, do we want to control the buttons? Do we want to control, um, and then do we want to render each of the slides? So we, now we already know we've got slides, so we can do at, so inside the inner, so at for each var, uh, row item in and let's just have a look at this on the accordion what would uh, we did at var item and then we called it row item okay so var item in row dot carousel items so again i want to just use the naming conventions that i've created for myself so it's easy to follow so for each item in row dot carousel items then we're going to put one of these in 
and we can grab what we put in here. So row item, row settings, row hide. So let's copy that, paste that in here. And then we can say, change this to be a carousel item. And change this to be carousel item settings. And then we can say if the row settings is set to true, high dot is set to true, then continue. So don't render this one out, basically. So that's good. We've got that. And also here we can just uh, work out if it's the first one. So we'll just put a code break block here. So var item slide index. Oh, we've got slide index item index equals zero. We'll put the for each inside that block and take off the starting at for for each because we don't need that. And then we'll just increment that here. And I think we also might need to increment slide index as well. No, we've, we've already got slide index incremented in the for, for loop. Whereas this one, we're just defining a value and then we're going to increment it here. So because we're using a for each we're not actually we're, we're looping through each item rather than the index so that's why we need to increment that value there so we can do var is first slide equals and then we can just do row uh, we can just do item index equals zero so at this point is it the first one and actually we will need this. This could get wrong because that will never that will never get incremented, and I'm not even inside the loop anymore. So that won't get incremented if you continue. Hmm. Well, that's okay because it never. Yeah, that's fine. We don't want it to increment. It's okay. It's not a problem. So is first slide. So if it is first slide. Then what we can do is we can do at is first slide question mark and then put act. I think it was active. Otherwise, no. So now we've got that in there. So we can say if it should be active or not. Then we can put the image in as well. So we can say if uh, row item dot image is not equal to null. Then let's pop an image in. I mean, we should have an image, but who knows? And we'll do at row item dot image dot URL. I think we put the brackets around it for the URL and the alt is We'll just get the image name row item dot image dot name. That'll do for now. But you can add properties. I think I've mentioned that on other videos. So then we've got carousel, uh, carousel caption inside this div. So we can say at if row item dot uh title yeah we can put on it we can check to see if that's null if not string dot is null or white space row item dot title then <clears throat> actually what we can do is we can put this as a var a variable so var has title equals this cut that paste that in there and then var has description equals and then put in description in there that way we know if it's got a title and a description or a description so if has title or a description or has description then render out this div and inside the div for each one of those 
we're just going to render those if it's there. So at if has title, then render the title. And at if has description, then render the description. Cancel that, and then we'll just output the title and description. So row item dot description uh, title. We know it's not blank. At row item dot description, and then save that. <clears throat> so this should give us a working carousel. And then what else do we have? So that's our individual items inside the carousel so we will just delete that we don't need those hard-coded ones anymore and then we've got the buttons as well so for next etc so we can make sure that the id matches up so we'll just do at carousel id in there after the hash sign and again there. So we've got the previous and the next. True, previous and next. Yeah, we could if we wanted to do the Umbraco dictionary values for previous and next. I've shown you how to do that on previous videos. Um, right, let's have a look at this and let's see if this works. So we'll reload the page now. The top row was going to be the carousel now, so let's see if we have a working carousel. We've got it. That was too easy. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, does it? Yeah, it does work. It was just a bit slow. Now, if you notice that the carousel there, they've got two different size images. So I, I will show you later about using the image cropper. But for now, what we'll do is we'll get it to use it. So get crop URL. Instead of image URL, do get crop URL. And we'll do um, we'll do width on uh, I don't know so maybe 900. Actually, we'll do do it like this. We'll do URL. No, yeah, get crop URL width 900, comma height. This might not work. I might need to. There might be an overload that I need to use specifically. We've got the options here, so let's just go through them. So string crop alias, so I can say the alias, but if I'm not using the alias, which we're not doing yet, oh yeah, I can just pass in the different ones, so width and height. So maybe the height should be about 300. Let's have a look at that. Save, reload. There we are, there's our frog and the dog. And you can change that to whatever you want it to be and things like that. But as I say, we'll go into the cropper later. So that's our carousel slides with our titles and descriptions. So let's see if we can add a setting then. Um, we we'll go into here. Reload this on Braco. On the settings, what do we want? So we want to give the option of showing these or not and, and having yeah, I think we'll keep the buttons. Let's add a setting then. On to document types, elements, content blocks, setting models, carousel row settings. And the first part was the indicators. So we can call this show indicators. So show indicators. What show or hide? Which one would it be? Show. Show indicators. Set this to true if you would like to show the indicators on this carousel. I'm going to just do true, true false, that will do. Submit that. 
Um, what else should we get it to do? So that's the indicators. I suppose we can make it show the buttons or not. And do show navigation buttons. Or are they arrows? Arrows. Show navigation arrows. Set this to true if you would like to show the navigation arrows on the carousel. Do another true false. Submit that and save. There are other things you can do. So you can change the individual speed of slides and things like that. Uh, if you want to, you can also make it dark or light. So carousel dark. Let's do that as well. Let's just add a dark mode. Show dark mode. Set this to true. If you want the carousel to be in dark mode, it just makes the text. Um, which way around does it do? So that's dark mode. Yeah, it just makes the text darker on it. And we'll do another true false. Click on that, submit, and then we'll do a reorder. And we'll just make sure that these go in the right order. So 10. 15 and then 20 and then all we have to do is save that go to settings go to models builder generate models wait for it to reload and then put the code in at the right relevant places it might be waiting oh do you want to restart your app yes i'd press a for always So this is where it's quite good that you've got these settings on these uh, blocks. Because now, uh, if we go into our about page, go into our content our carousel settings, we can say show indicators, show navigation arrows, and show dark mode. Submit that to true. <clears throat> and then here, we just need to check. So indicators. So in this we can do an at if uh, row dot show in the row uh, row settings dot, oh. Oh, it's just settings settings dot show indicators put that onto the next line so if settings dot show indicators and that is just if that equals true you don't need to do equals equals true because the result of this is either true or false so if you want to show those settings it's not going to be null i don't think it is anyway and then what we, i mean what we could do here is we could just do comma uh, speech mark dot and then false like that so if it is null then just return false that should satisfy that check then we've got the carousel inner and i think um at the top level let's just see where the carousel dark goes you've got carousel and then slide so we can do it in here so row uh, sorry settings dot show dark mode question mark what should it be carousel dark otherwise no okay that's easy as well and we'll just do that i'll just wrap that in uh, wrap that in brackets just so it's clear that that condition is there first of all probably not necessary so that's the dark mode and then the other setting that we added as well let's just have a look Go to settings show navigation arrows so do we want to show the arrows there they are so we'll just do at if 
settings dot show navigation arrows. Just move them up. I was using the alt key there to and then the arrow up or down and that moved them. So again, question mark and then false. Oops, I keep doing that. So save that. So that should be the settings that we need to just control these sorts of things. We didn't need that heading ID in the end, so we can save that as well without it. Let's have a look, shall we? Go on the front page of the site, refresh this. So we can see it's in dark mode. We can see it's got the um, navigation settings. We can see it's got it's got the navigation buttons. It's got the indicators. Let's try turning them off. So we'll turn off indicators first of all. Save and publish. F5. And we've not got the indicators anymore. Let's... Oh, a quick way to get into settings as well is if you just hover over that and then click on the turn off dark mode. That's turn off dark mode. And then finally, show navigation arrows. Submit that, save and publish. Now we've got the slides there. Let's see if it changes. Beautiful. And you could add a setting then if you want to show the title and descriptions or not, things like that. It's completely up to you. You could uh, change it all how you want it to be. So that is this episode done with. And that is all the block list um, types that I'm going to create as well. Um, I'm glad I went through them all, though, and just gave you different ideas and different ways to implement things. Uh, if you do like the video, please click on like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, please share it with others as well. Um, and we'll be moving on to other topics to do with building Racco 10 sites soon in the next episode. Um, if you do want to say thanks with a coffee, you can do by going to codeshare.co.uk slash coffee. But it's not obliged. Um, just enjoy the videos. Everything I do on here is free anyway. If you want the documentation for these sorts of elements, you can go to getbootstrap.com slash docs and then the version number. And again, you can get all the code from the GitHub repository. And if you are enjoying it as well, please uh, star the repo if you like it. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Bye.